warning, this episode will feature a lot of hazing and a lot of college-related content that may be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. HBO in the 1990s and 2000s became a powerhouse for storytelling and thoughtful content creation by all films and directors that could haunt you, shock you, and make you self-aware about the world around you. At the time, it was also a hotspot for a wider range of content. More than imagined by the creators when Time Warner partnered to create HBO in 1972. Take for instance The Sopranos, The Wire three years later in 2002 premiering on the channel, Deaf Comedy Jam, Dream On, The Larry Sanders Show, Tales from the Crypt, Comedy Nights with comedians such as George Carlin, other comedians, and so on and so forth. In the, in the 1990s, it was pretty similar to be watching a version of HBO like today with Vice, the channel on YouTube, which once broke the grounds of journalism like HBO did with a wide variety of content including sports, documentaries, films, politics, and drama series on the TV every single night on HBO. Today, you could now go on YouTube and watch whatever you crave. Speaking of YouTube, HBO also made lost clips and films that are featured on the site, but this film I am going to mention to you today is one of the most lost films in HBO history and the first ever one to actually have a ban from airing on the network. On YouTube, just search fraternities or hazing or frat life or fraternity parties and you may pop across a video that is very dynamic but yet very grainy and it has a simple title with the year on it. Over multiple uploads of this video have been made and countless hours of the watched tape have been viewed by thousands of people as they are watching something revolutionary. Something so groundbreaking yet so controversial and so relatable today if you consider found footage films in the 21st century that something like this has never happened through no limits or fighting to get into a closed door and as the two filmmakers covered what everyone has wanted to know what goes on at fraternities and sororities and what levels will men go to crave and build acceptance this was so wild and yet to this day many question whether it is real or fake wikipedia thinks it is fake when many others say it's real as the debate goes on for generations to come either way this documentary is so wild and crazy I questioned myself after watching this documentary about a sinister side to Greek life. This is the story of HBO's most forgotten and banned documentary that went so far it had to be removed off of the air and is now a hidden gem in lost media. This is the story of the 1998 documentary Frat House. This documentary got hate, so much hate, the two filmmakers, Todd Phillips and Andrew Gerland, faced heavy pressure and criticism for how the film was portrayed, but this impacted their careers and built them into the super star producers that they are today. Let me explain. Besides making a few indie films, such as a lewd movie called, and I'm going to be very light while saying this, called, quote, Screwed Owl. Goldstein's Kingdom of Corn, Corn, Gramagella. Andrew Gerland has had never done a project quite like this, even given how young both Gerland and Phillips were. Now, there's no evidence to prove that if they were in college or weren't in college during the time of the filmmaking process for this documentary i tried searching everywhere and couldn't find a thing phillips also produced a few indie films on his own 
as both Gerlin and him attended New York University's Tisch School of Arts. The two producers would later make edgy content such as Gerland, making the films such as The Last Exorcism 1 and 2, Cheats, and Mail Order Brides. He also produced his series for Fox, including Gerland on Gerland in 2012, and a year later, The Gabriels on Fox. Phillips would later produce on his own as well with him being the most popular of the two producers. He has directed and produced the Hangover series, War Dogs, Road Trip, Borat, A Star is Born, Project X, Old School, Bittersweet Motel, The Exiles, Starsky and Hutch, and even 2023's new project, Maestro, which is now a contender for the Academy Awards. Both directors would push the boundaries in filmmaking producing edgy, out-of-your-seat, shocking entertainment that no other director would go before at that time. Their start to filmmaking was already looking bright, and that included, as mentioned before, breaking film and society norms to push out-of-the-box and edgy content that will make you squeamish, laugh, and make you question reality. That's what the 1998 film Frat Life was intended to replicate. According to Colander.com, it says, the film, which occasionally pops up on YouTube before inevitably being removed, is a cynical insider's perspective on college fraternities and their hazing rituals. Phillips and co-director Andrew Gerland spent one year inside frat houses attending their rush parties and participating in their hazing rituals. In an opening voiceover, Phillips says he was told that a documentary that gets inside fraternities couldn't be made. It turned out the naysayers were right, given the fact the film was never officially released. At one point, frat house seemed to have a bright future ahead of it with hbo backing its production and a grand jury prize being awarded at the 1998 sundance film festivals but controversy surrounding the project and how it was filmed primarily stemming from complaints made by some of the film's participants that they reenacted scenes for the camera sank the project and hbo decided not to air it our cast of characters included some memorable ones including a guy that I found to be very unique, which was Blossom, an alias to a hyper-aggressive meathead who runs a fraternity as he tells the cameras with a straight face that one of his frat's hazing rituals includes biting the head off a rat. Uh, we uh, get ice-cold water thrown on us in fucking minus 80 degrees below. Uh, we eat pizza that's disgusting with x lax all over it. Uh, and the main thing, this is the one I like the best. Uh, you have to take a rat. You have to put it in your hand. And as it's squirming around in your hand, you just bite the head off and pull it off and all the blood squirts out. And that, that's a pretty traditional thing. And you got to do that in order to pledge our fraternity. Now, as somebody who has seen the frat life, they would usually never admit to their hazing rituals but seeing this film it goes to show you that part of this was made up but blossom however i've met guys like him he admits to eating a rat and not only that but he admits to having his fraternity brothers have similar hazing rituals he represents the most extreme aspects of college life and the two directors mention he was warned about him like many scenes and sound bites throughout this film, it was a pretty big indication that his bravado and narcissistic stunts were going to try and mess the two filmmakers up. You could see a scene near the end of their time once everybody in the fraternity house realizes that this documentary is being made, that he is going after these guys. These filmmakers, I, feel, I felt bad for them. They honestly would get that real of treatment in an actual fraternity. Because as I mentioned at the top of this episode, there was not going to be anybody probably ever that's going to go inside for a house is more like this. A fascinating scene that really captured the eyes of many was the candlelit fraternal code ritual. Part of this I cannot show, but 
actually the film featured at one point young men in a dark room around a table of candlelights and the new pledges were beginning to learn the fraternity code and if any of you wanted to know the fraternity name Alpha Tau Omega men were actually gathered around the tables at this fraternity house reading off the fraternal code all wearing stress shirts and ties looking a bit like insurance salesmen as they were beginning the proceedings and then after the whole party is over there is a girl that is completely naked and in the film they show a lot of innuendos and a lot of very I don't know how to describe it, but very grotesque scenes of men mistreating women. There was also another scene where the man is also mistreating a woman, and none of this I can show. So, if you are wondering where those clips were, the documentary itself is actually down in the description below. But, compared to old school, this documentary actually does show how hazing can be and impact so many with binge drinking and alcohol usage as we have seen because you could see those guys they were completely drunk it was the most more extreme than old school as the amount of deprivation these fraternity brothers had to go through just to be involved after this party was over and the hazing began was really unique to see and it showed them in dark rooms, being psychologically humiliated and abused, having to crawl up scares blindfolded. I mean, everything that you would expect in a fraternity hazing, you actually got to see, and you saw the full extent of it. In the end, they didn't become brothers, but they realized how bad this road could be. As a matter of fact, this actually describes a lot of the films that Todd Phillips and Andrew Gerland would make later in their careers as it amounted to the same level of raunchy and edgy material that we see out of them today. It combines, I will say Frat House combines all of their films. It combines Old School, Road Trip, Hangover Series, Joker really impacted their careers. This documentary to me was very thought-provoking, whether it was real or fake. And if many of you want to watch the documentary, it is still on YouTube, fingers crossed. But the film has garnered a lot of criticism over the years, but on IMBD it still has a 6.7 out of 10, and the film to this day carried through two producers' careers, created the most raunchy and most memorable films of our time, and not only that, but it created a sort of fiction on real type scenario to problems that we need answers about. And not only that, this documentary will forever be known as the documentary, the first one that HBO ever banned. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. This is a little different compared to my other content as I'm also a film buff as well. Loved Loved talking about this, even though the content could get very grotesque. And I've been around frat guys before, so it really answers and bugs the question as to what really goes on in fraternity life, whether it was real or fake. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to subscribe. Have a great night. It's currently late, and that's why I've been a little more quiet, because people have been asleep. But either way, have a good day, good evening, good night, and... Not only that, subscribe to this channel and join the following as I will be making more sports content and other content on threads now, on Twitter, LinkedIn, Tumblr, and other creation sites. So thank you guys so much for watching and have a good day.